What is up everybody, it is me Devil Never Cry, and today we are in the void mode with a video that you guys have highly requested. So in this video I'll be going over some fundamentals of Nero, um, you know, some basic tips, basic uh, combos that you can do to get yourself started on the road to uh, a so-called advanced Nero. A lot of people have been asking for this uh, throughout the streams and videos, you know, leaving comments such as, you know, how'd you get so good with Nero, to which I say thanks, I don't consider myself a like great Nero, you know, I'm a competent player, but you know, the only reason I got to where I am is basically through practice and through learning the game's mechanics. So without further ado, let's dive right in. This video will be quite long, I'll leave uh, timestamps in the description so you can skip ahead to what you want to see, or if I'm droning on, again, you can skip ahead and see what you want to see. So we'll start with the very basics, which is my control scheme. I have a separate video on this but I thought I'd just show it to you here real quick. The only thing I have changed from the default is the gun button is pressed, uh, the gun button is put on a trigger so that I can hold and press it whenever I need to and the devil bringer is on the square face button. That's mainly for the charge mechanic which I will dive into in just a bit so don't worry. Next thing I want to talk about is the skill list. I will be referring to moves via their in-game name, uh, so to sort of avoid any confusion, check out the skill list, learn what moves are called. At the same time, if you're ever wondering how the hell do you do a move, check out the skill list because it will tell you. So first things first, uh, let's start with the very basics, which is movement in DMC. One of the things I see newcomers do quite a lot is just run to enemies to get into attacking range, uh, which I find quite interesting considering the game provides you with a plethora of ways to get in attacking range. So if you lock onto an enemy, which uh, if you're playing this game, you got to get used to locking on. It is fundamental for any sort of, well, for most moves in the game, uh, whether that's, um, you know, traversal, you know, dodging, or even attacking because, you know, a lot of moves require you to lock on. Uh, get used to locking on for like 80% of this game. So if you lock on and hit either the Devil Breaker or Devil Bringer button, whatever you have it mapped to, Nero will pull enemies to him, uh, alleviating the need for you to run in, you know, maybe put yourself in danger, because uh, you, you'll probably have to dodge enemy attacks if you're running to them. And it will also boost your star rank just a little bit, uh, or you know, if an enemy is far away and you don't want your star rank to drop, uh, this is a quick way of getting them to you and halting the de degradation of your star rank. Uh, one thing to note is that some enemies are too heavy to be pulled towards you, so you will go to them instead. This can be most evidently seen uh, during boss fights or some of these sub-boss enemies. Some enemies are also uh, invulnerable to this move uh, during certain states they're in. If they have a shield or something, they can't be pulled, so you'll have to break the shield before you're able to do so. One other move that you can get, uh, you can use to sort of get around this is the streak attack, which, you know, if you're farther away, it does cover a wide range. If you position yourself just right, uh, you can get it so that uh, you can, you know, essentially get into attacking range without knocking them back. Uh, the only reason they're essentially knocked back here is because we're in a wide open expanse, which you generally won't find in this game. You'll often hit them against the wall, as you can see there, and you'll be left in attacking range. Let's talk about the Blue Rose for a second now. So the Blue Rose is Nero's hand cannon. You know, he fires it quite slowly, it's supposed to be a powerhouse, it's not like it was in DMC4 which you could, you know, just mash and it'll come out super fast. Uh, so, we see the return of the charge shot system, there's two kinds of charge shots. The first one is the color up system which you'll have access to from the very beginning of the game. If you press and hold the gun button, Nero does this little animation where he'll begin to put bullets into his gun. Uh, once you let go, he'll automatically fire off a shot, but as you can see there in the, in the UI, we have two shots left. Main reason to use this is number one, damage uh, and hit stun. As you can see, the enemy basically was stunned there, um, were overwhelmed to the point where they fell over. Number two is, uh, it's useful for setups. If you want to delay an enemy's fall because you want to do some cool setups, uh, you know, 
as you can see there, uh, it's useful for that because of um, the amount of hits there are. And the second uh, sort of charge shot system, which uh, again works the same way but is only unlocked after endgame, uh, is the charge shot similar to his DMC4 incarnation. Uh, you see his arm glow there, there's three levels of charge, the UI has gone fully blue, and if you hit them with a level 3 charge shot, uh, it does. first of all it does insane damage. Um, there will be an explosion where they're popped into the air, and then a second explosion which is useful uh, for setting up combos, essentially. And the reason, this is the, essentially the reason why I've remapped my controller so that the gun is on a trigger, so I can always have this charged. Uh, and this this will shred uh, boss health, especially level 3, uh, even on Son of Sparta difficulty, uh, and it's very useful in Dante Must Die uh, for, you know, just breaking guards and stuff in general. Uh, and you can use this move whilst dodge rolling. Which is a pretty cool feature because there's even a little animation for it, which is kind of cool. But if we get this enemy back to where we were. The second mechanic I want to discuss is the Exceed, which I have made a video on this before. Um, I'll link it in the description. I go into basically all of it. Um, it's, a, it's something you want to learn, fundamental. Uh, I'll go over it briefly here, but uh, again, if you want to sort of get it, you know, see something more in depth, check out that video. Simply put, uh, you always see Nero Charge's sword during cutscenes, you know, it's a motorcycle sword, it's pretty cool, uh, but it's not substance of, I mean, so it's not style over substance. There is substance to it, uh, in that it can be used to augment your attacks. I'm manually revving the sword here, the UI lights up, uh, and Nero's moves uh, are augmented crazily. Uh, the, even the animations change, uh, and he does more damage. There's three levels of charge, but again, manually revving is a waste of time because it breaks up the flow of gameplay, leaves you vulnerable, and nobody wants to be doing this, to be honest. However, that's where the EX Act, the Exact System, and the Max Act system come into play. If you hit the Exceed button just as a, your attack with the Red Queen hits, you'll instantly stock one level of Exceed, and you know you can basically mess about to your heart's content. A very useful for damage, a must on uh, difficulties like Dante Must Die because uh, the addition to your damage that it does is vital uh, along with the style uh, gain that you get from it. Every, ex every Red Queen attack can essentially be exceeded um, and if your timing is good enough just like it was there, you get the Max Act system. Uh, which will instantly charge all three stocks and you can do insane um, things, you know, the height gain on that attack alone uh, was crazy. Essentially separating you from an enemy, doing a lot of damage and allowing you to wail on them to your heart's content. So do be sure to learn the Exceed system. Uh, now let's talk about uh, another endgame sort of mechanic, which is the Bringer Knuckle uh, mechanic. So we were discussing earlier the streak and how that knocks enemies back, right? Well, with this new mechanic, uh, you can essentially alleviate that. So if you tap the Devil Bringer button whilst you input another uh, Red Queen attack, for example, uh, your arms will essentially come out and you know they have their own attack properties, they do chip damage, but the key thing is timing, you know? You're basically... Uh, doing double the damage, pretty much. And it stops enemies from flying away. Very, very useful. You have to piano the keys, essentially. As you can see, my um, controller inputs on the left there. I'm essentially pianoing these keys super fast to get this to come out, because if you do it too late, you're just going to a standard, like, essentially bring a execution. And it can be used in, in air as well, but juggling the exceed mechanic and basically all of this is very tricky, which you're not going to get, you know, without a substantial amount of practice. Even I haven't, you know, begun even begun to master this the the bringer mechanic um, because it's nuts. But uh, barring the fact that it adds to your style and damage, um, it's very useful for setups if timed right of course. 
as you can see, I did a caliber there, and you know, I ended up behind the enemy. Well, that covers that. Now I want to discuss uh, something else which is fundamental to gameplay, which is dodging. A lot of people have trouble with dodging attacks in this game. So, let's turn on the enemy's attacks and let's delve into what sort of ways you can use to dodge. First of all, when I said lock on was fundamental, I meant it. You need to lock on to do the dodge roll, and you can dodge roll around the enemy. Um, you'll basically be going around them in a circle. Uh, that's the easiest, well, that's number, the first way. The second way is to just jump. I have a whole video on this, um, so do be sure to check that out. That goes in depth on all the other things you can do. Um, you can air taunt, you can use the Gerbera arm, uh, you can even use the shuffle attack, which is pretty cool, right? Uh, and then let's discuss parrying. So. Enemy attacks in this game can be parried if you time a sword strike just right. It is a bit tricky because you have to hit the enemy's weapon or whatever they're hitting with, um, and not the enemy itself. The easiest way I've found to do this, uh, if we spawn in another enemy here, whoops, wrong menu. The easiest way I've, I've found, well, easiest way to do this essentially, I found is with Nero's shuffle uh, ability, which. Uh, again, is a way to dodge attacks as well as parry. You have to, well, first of all, we have to get the enemy to block. So I can get to show you guys this. Come on, block my attack. Okay. If he went for an attack there instead of. There you go, there's a parry, and his his shield is essentially broken. Abuse this, because it's like it's free damage, essentially. You're going to have to learn the timings and whatnot, but I found that the shuffle uh, has the uh, greatest pro probability of essentially parrying, whilst limiting the amount of danger you put yourself in. And, as I said, this uh, the back shuffle it does can be used to avoid attacks, as you can see there. Barring that, if you have the Overture Arm equipped, uh, I found that the easiest to parry as well, just because it has such a wide hitbox uh, and it does well, a good amount of damage. Do note that uh, boss attacks can be parried as well, uh, and in fact this parrying mechanic, oh there you go, there's a parry, st stuns the enemy for a bit, leaves them open. Uh, this parry mechanic isn't just limited to Nero. Dante and V have it as well. Uh, so make of that what you will. Uh, they, all, they all also have um, certain attacks that are very easy to parry with. But that covers those. If you do want a in-depth look at what the breakers e each do, uh, I do have uh, separate videos on those on the in the tutorial playlist, which again I'll leave a link down below. Check that out in your own time. Very clear and concise, uh, saves you tr the trouble of having to sit through a long ass video. Let me turn these enemy attacks off for a second. Because next we're going to be getting into uh, just bread and butter combos that I like to use essentially. And you know, I'll discuss jump cancelling a little bit. Um, again, separate video of jump, jump cancelling I've done. Simply put, if you use the enemy step ability, uh, you can jump off of enemies like so. Uh, and there's a few reasons you want to do this. Number one, this does, again, as you can see, boost your, your style rank just a tiny bit, but it's still enough. As you can see, I've worked my way up to. C rank, and you can eventually get all the way up if you have enough patience. Uh, the second reason is because it gives you a good amount of Devil Trigger. You gain a good amount of Devil Trigger, if that makes sense. So if you're low on Devil Trigger, and you know you're taunting all the way, and you know maybe taunts aren't giving you enough Devil Trigger, if you jump off an enemy, uh, that will help. The other reason to do this is um, mainly on bosses, because bosses. Uh, very large, they have very large um, 
models uh, for you to just easily jump off of, uh, keep yourself suspended in the air doing damage. Um, and the main reason to stay in the air is because uh, it's a lot harder for ground attacks to hit you if you're in the air. Uh, fundamental thing uh, I guess I could discuss is the, why exactly I, uh, or why I and why you should be fighting enemies in the air as much as possible. The main reason is because whilst you're in the air, and other enemy attacks can't hit you. Whilst you're in the air, you're not vulnerable to whatever the, guy, the other people on the ground are doing. Uh, leaving you to basically wail on enemies as much as you want uh, without fear of being hit. And as you know, if you're not hit, um, your style rank won't decrease. You want to, you know, helps you get S ranks. And just in general, it just looks more stylish to be fighting in the air, to be honest. I very rarely um, fight on the ground. The only, only time I fight on the ground is sometimes maybe to use some breaker specific moves. But get used to staying in the air, and the jump cancel ability is vital for staying in the air. So keep that in mind. But now let's sort of delve into like some basic combos you can kind of do with Nero. Uh, so if you start off with a combo C, and then cancel it to high roller, simple roulette, one shot, and then split. Um, very basic combo, a lot easier, well, a lot more stylish looking than sort of mashing. Pair that up with Exceed, uh, and things obviously look better. Something simple you can do there. Uh, the reason I like to start off with a combo C is because it has a wide sort of hitbox. So if there are enemy enemies in the vicinity, they'll sort of be hit and be stunned, uh, allowing you to keep your star rank high and you know not having to um, to get hit and lose your star. And at the same time, of course, because you hit multiple enemies the style rank will raise higher than, than usual. Or if you want something a bit simpler, um, or not simpler, you can even add on to the end of that combo if that wasn't long enough for you. So let's say you do combo C, you do high roller, roulette spin, shoot, split, hold split, um, so you do the hard way move, bounce the enemy, and then you can, you know, maybe hit them with a with a breaker move uh, yeah, to end off the combo. Or if you want, you can even use hard way to initiate a combo off of the ground bounce, and then you can do whatever you want there. One of the key things that people, um, you know, I think every player loves doing is jump canceling calibers with Nero. Um, the caliber move is the shuffle forward move in midair. Um, looks pretty cool. Very simple to jump cancel. A few high roller, and then uh, do one one swing of uh, Nero's aerial attack, and then caliber, and then just jump the moment the attack hits. And then you, if you're fast enough, you can input another one. Um, do be careful not to uh, jump cancel too early, otherwise the move won't come out and the enemy will fall. If you jump cancel too late, and the enemy will have already, you know, been launched far, far away, so there's no point. So we like to pair this up with a shot from the blue rose, which, if timed right, you can sort of do it indefinitely. Uh, you don't have to be careful because that was me inputting it too early there, which is why the enemy didn't travel very far. But you can see the inputs in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. They are probably a bit too fast uh, well, to sort of catch at uh, normal speed, but you can slow the video down to maybe half speed, and that should hopefully help. Um, you sort of have to input the jump just as the caliber happens, just as you see the flash from Nero's sword hit the enemy. Um, input the shoot and another caliber sort of immediately um, if you want to get them out fast. If you do it that fast you can sort of just like sort of twitch instead of instead of calibering if that makes sense. Or a very simple move to jump cancel in midair is the pay line move which is um, inputted via lock on 
forward and the melee attack. And that will send you sort of diagonally streaming through the enemy. However, if you jump cast at the right time, um, if you do it fast enough, you can keep the air and enemy in the air indefinitely. It's all about timing, and every enemy is sort of has different timing because of their hitbox, if that makes sense, um, because of their shape and their size. So certain moves are easier to jump cancel, certain moves aren't. Uh, but the main reason you want to jump cancel is not because it looks stylish, but because in terms of getting S ranks, um, or what, triple S ranks, um, it's vital because it provides a massive style boost. Again, I have a whole video on jump cancelling, so check that out. Uh, but in all honesty, just hop into the training mode. Um, try things out in your own time. Uh, everybody learns at their own pace. Uh, if there's a certain move you like, um, you like to do, then try and uh, just practice it over and over. Learn the intricacies. Uh, that goes for the breakers as well. Um, I, I really like the Gerber arm. Uh, I do have tutorials on what each arm does if you don't know. Um, but these things were just found via experimenting, you know? And, you know, as much as it's, um, you know, interesting to, you know, emulate other players uh, in terms of, like, the you know, other ideas, the whole point is to be creative and play how you want to play, you know? Part of the fun is figuring out things for yourself. Um, but hopefully, this is uh, sort of giving you a little bit of insight into um, how Nero's mechanics work. Um, if you're a beginner player, maybe this is uh, giving you some insight into some of the more advanced mechanics, I guess you could say. But yeah, if there's anything I've missed, or if you want me to do a follow-up, um, do let me know uh, and see what I can do. With that said and done, it has been me, Devil Never Cry. I'd like to thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you next video.